afternoon uh, uh, to all. Hello, I am audible. Oh, I am audible. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm wait for a couple of minutes. Okay, sir. Uh, please wait a couple of minutes. Some technical issues.
Hello, sir. Yes, Shalini, ma'am. गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते सर मेरी कौन आ रही है गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून क्या आ रहा है वॉइस वॉइस में थोड़ा सा चल रही है एकदम अभी मैं नहीं थोड़ा सा ये हो रहा है मिक्सिंग आ रहा है सामने मैडम आप देखिए इधर भी आगे होगा अभी आ रहा है अभी हेलो आई एम ऑडिबल टू एवरी वन यस 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 uh now we have with us uh, mr alok joshi sir uh now we are starting a, a session 2 uh very good afternoon to our respected guest speaker mr alok joshi sir respected our honorable vice chancellor meena rajesh ma'am respected our registrar dr shriram joshi sir respected our dean school of science professor vidya mishra ma'am dean triple i sir professor Sir Anju Naidu, ma'am, all the head of departments and, and faculty members. I, Shalini Prajapati, assistant professor, Department of Mathematics, School of Science, G H Rai Suni University, Sai Khera. Welcome you all for third day of faculty development program session two on leadership skill for enhancing personal and organizational outcomes. in association with triple i cell iqsc cell and double i cell of uh, school of science dh rai suni university sai khera so without taking your further time i would uh, uh, now like to introduce our guest speaker mr alok joshi sir who is a co uh, competent uh, professional with around 21.6 years of experience including pharma sales product training soft skill training sales training and overall training management successfully uh, lead a team of 10 trainers who ultimately bring productive changes in ground staff performance increasing the organization profitability uh, profitability uh, sir has several skilled including training management and associated skills like uh, learning and development training planning classroom training online training return on training investment leadership skill graphics design uh, ground staff management performance tracking and many more uh, sir has uh, uh, sir has worked as a product and training manager in uh, konad lab private limited from may 2009 to july 2015 sir has also worked in pharma sales at dr reddy fourth india and alchem uh, phytosticals uh, between 2000 and 2009 from august 2015 to july 2016 work as a freelancer trainer and graphic designer uh, sir has also worked as a soft skill trainer uh, and sir about 200 2000 students in soft uh, soft skill sir has trained about 2000 students in soft skill at priyadarshini uh, college of engineering sir has also worked as a training manager in Sig uh, signity pharmaceutical private limited and seb life private limited uh, limited from 2018 to 2019 sir has also worked as a trainer a training manager in mpcg Mo uh, mobile private limited 
from October 2009 to May 2000. Sir is uh, uh, working as a, a communication trainer at GH Raisuni University, Sai Khera, from June 2022 to present. And also, uh, sir has completed our graduation in uh, Bachelor of Commerce. Sir has also completed certain uh, basic uh, certificates courses in Six Sigma, White Belt, and Yellow Belt through EDMI. Ongoing courses in Six Sigma, Green Belt through EDMI. Backed a few certificates in public speaking activity. Regularly, uh, regularly sir, uh, write leadership post and article on LinkedIn done with four articles new now welcome i would like to invite our guest speaker mr alok joshi sir to come forward and commence his uh, guest lecture and guided us sir over to you Sir, I'm audible. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, is voice clear? Yes, sir. Audible. Is voice clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. And thank you very much for your uh, kind introduction and this uh, long list of uh, attributing everything to me, although that is my resume which ultimately I, I have given. So today we have gathered here for leadership communication. So can I ask everybody, who do you think as a leader? Uh, the people who might be there online. Uh, can you just uh, open your mic and as per your, I, I don't want the conventional leadership uh, definition. Can anybody just open your mic and tell who do you think as a leader? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. And do we have the uh, audience also? Sir. Yes, sir. We have. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. We have 480 participants in online mode through okay, YouTube so and Webex meeting. Yeah, so can they, uh, the participants who are there on Webex, can they just, when their mic means, do they have the facility? Uh, they can only chat, sir. Okay, they can only chat. Okay, 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 yeah. Uh, sir, where can they chat? Just a minute. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Dr. Swas Mane says leadership is the process of influencing others. Okay, now can anybody else also write what is leadership or who do you consider as a leader before going ahead for leadership as such? Because leadership itself is a very big term and there are many concepts of leadership. Okay, Strategical and critical thinking. Strategical and critical thinking, okay. So, uh, does anybody else also use that uh, strategical and critical thinking? Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, this is because 
leader is somebody who can influence that's a very uh, true term that i can take from dr swas mane that uh, if you are capable of influencing somebody you can be seen as a leader irrespective of whether you are sitting on the leadership position or not but if you can influence you are a leader the first and foremost leader in our life is our father who we get the uh, entirely influenced by our father negatively or positively but our father is our first leader in our life not our mother our mother is a very uh, lovely figure in our life but our first leader is our father and we usually follow our father's footsteps when we grow and when we come to the age and we understand the world what we basically first understand the world from the father's point of view not from the mother's point of view we understand love from mother but we understand the world from the father's point of view so our father becomes our first leader and that is how this definition goes very well that the father influences us very much after father if anybody can influence us that is our teacher because that is the first exposure after father who leads us who gives us some guidance and who tells us what to do what not to do so just like as our father influences us very much uh, a teacher in anybody's life has the first exposure of leadership when we go out of our house and that's how we get influenced by them be it positively or negatively so i i just when i started my uh, speech i said you good evening so is this evening right now no it's not the evening so some of you might have thought oh what kind of person you are this is not evening and you are talking about evening oh you could not connect to camera Oh, my camera has got some problem. Am I audible still? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My camera has some uh, problem. Okay. I may not be. I may not be uh, seen to you uh, people, but it's okay. I cannot do anything now. It's the last moment uh, technical glitch. So uh, leadership is uh, something we are talking about. It's all about influence. And the moment I said good evening, some of you who understand the logic of time, they will always think that what kind of person you are. You are coming as a communicator. You are coming as the speaker over here, and you are saying good evening, not good afternoon. so that's how you get influenced every time we are saying something every time we are presenting ourselves anywhere be it be it our home be it our college be it in the society or at our workplace we are making perception about ourselves in the people's mind and the people who are doing something to influence others they are seen as a leader and then the people will start following them if you are influencing somebody positively they'll start following you and if you even being at the position of leadership you cannot influence people positively this for the now ek tarah se kasne don't be yeah so let's go ahead with this uh, very definition and what is leadership communication the way when you become a leader or you are seen as a leader whatever you do that becomes your leadership communication and if we go technically the development and delivery of messages that inform inspire engage and unite your team for a common goal that is leadership communication so how many of you do you think that you are do you see yourself as a leader all the people who are online and who can just unmute their mic you are all teachers so do you see yourself as a leader hello yes i think dr suhas mane alone he is attending this session so i am very happy dr suhas mane that <laughs> your your communication is constantly going on and that is motivating me so because as a leader we see the person who is standing 
above and just separate from the people who is that is seen as a leader. So any time when so any time when you are basically apart from your team and you are directing your team and people are taking you as your leader, you are always at the leadership position, irrespective of your being as a leadership position in the leadership position or not, you are leading them. And when you lead them with the common purpose to go ahead and go somewhere in your career as well as in your personal life, you become a leader. Yes, I think now am I audible? Am I visible now? No, again got got out. Oh. Yes. Sir. Just a minute, this is again a communication glitch. Stop over here. Okay, my calm can I bunk her? Your voice is clear, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. This, this something has gone and I have Ashish with me, our technical expert. Just a minute, please give me a second. निकाल दें क्या उसको नहीं तो ये ठीक है कैमरे यही वाला क्या था अच्छा है यस ये ठीक है चल रहा है आई भी दिक्कत नहीं करेगा Yes. Can you see me now, ma'am? Yes, I, I can see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, uh, a single goal of uh, taking your followers, your people ahead with a single goal of going ahead in your life, that is a leadership communication. And whenever a teacher is, is standing in front of all the students, he or she is the leader of the student because you have a common goal. You want to teach somebody to your students and you want the students to follow those footsteps so that they can make their career well. So it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility to inform them, to inspire them and engage them. Most importantly, engage them because if the followers are not engaged with the leader, there is no usage of having this leadership position in our life. And then unite your team, attain a single goal of their growth. So whenever we talk about leadership, it's always about people, people and people who are in front of us. And that's how somebody asked that day, what is the difference between a leader and a manager? So manager will always be focus oriented, uh, task oriented, task focus. He will take care of the processes of the task done or not. A leader will always be focused on his people because people do the task. Task cannot define the people. If people are good, tasks will always be attained as defined or as designed. So it's always the leader's responsibility how the people respond to the leader. And that's how we also define the leadership communication. So if we talk about the goal in the uh, organizational point of view, what goal does this leadership communication has? This is basically to create a culture you want in your team. It's not about your team. It's about the culture you take ahead and put it or feed your team. That is what the team will follow. If you feed them well, they will follow the culture that you are giving them out. Then circulate and bring consensus among the created goal, whether there is a consensus of the goals or not, whether the teacher and the student, they are on the same page or not. That is the responsibility of a leadership communication that all the student and the leader or the teacher should be on the same page. This is what we need to achieve. This is what we need to attain after this class, after this year, after this semester and after this career after this four year or five year or two years or three years of stint of a student in their institution. So leadership communication defines their path of career. And then building and enhancing the trust between the both. Have you ever been involved with somebody who you don't trust at all? 
Have you ever experienced that you are getting involved with somebody who you don't trust? It never happens. Trust is the first and foremost thing. It's a bedrock of the, the you getting engaged with the people. The only thing when you don't get engaged and, uh, and uh, be with the people where it is a compulsion, you don't do it with your own thought process, with your own inner calling. So you always do it with you, when you have a trust on people, you get engaged with them, you feel like spending time with them, you feel like listening to them, you feel like following them. And that is how leadership communication makes entire difference when people start trusting you. Encourage more open dialogues because leadership is all about people. It's not only about tasks. When the people are developed, the task will be taken care of by the people themselves. So first and foremost thing, it has to be the open dialogue. It has to be the free flow of communication of thoughts, of ideas from leader to follower, from followers to the leader. So any of the teacher who is not open to the students will not be able to build this leadership communication within that team, within that class of the student or within that college or within that institution. And it gives rise to more collaboration. People are coming to you. People are loving to come to you. That is your collaboration. That is your sign of a good leadership communication, making you your people well informed, whatever the information comes and you convince them you you are able to tell the why behind this communication. It's not only what of the communication. If you are able to tell your people why to do that, why to do this task, why to do this uh, uh, assignment, why to go over there for the, the internship, what will happen after the internship? If you are able to tell them why with the conviction, your conviction, then definitely they will also buy your why. See, understand people don't go ahead with what you have. People go ahead with why do you have those things? People will buy. Why have you become a teacher? People not, will not buy us because we have become trainer. We have become the teachers. Why have we become the teachers or trainers? Our why convinces them, not our what. And the same way we have to convince them, why are you studying over here? Why should you do this assignment? Why should you complete your tasks? So why is more important than what? Avoid and prevent the miscommunication. Obviously, we have to avoid the miscommunication so that we are not uh, diverting from our goals. This is a very good uh, survey and this survey says what is the role of communication in everybody's life. Although this survey is all about the employees and the employer communication and flow between them, it says 52% of the people of the employee, they feel the higher stress if there is no communication or poor communication, there is no quality of communication, higher stress. 44% of the people, employees, they feel the failure in completing the projects because of the poor communication. 31% they miss their performance goal because there is no communication from their leader. And 20% experience that obstacles in innovation. This is what we need in today's time. We need to innovate the things that Atman Nirbhar Bharat we talk about that is incomplete without the innovations. And we see the people who have got the innovations, they are prospering well in their projects, in their startups, because they are innovative. But because of the poor communication, that innovation is not coming out. And that is where a leadership fails if we are not able to properly communicate to our people. 18% they have lost the sales opportunity. We talk about the sales opportunity, but we can bring a lot of opportunity to our students. But if we don't have the clear cut communication, the motivating communication towards our students, we will fail to achieve this opportunity that our students can get. And our, our students opportunity is our opportunity because we ask them to follow us. And if they don't get succeeded in their life, the onus is of ours. And at least through our communication, we can motivate to have a goal in their life and achieve it. Now, uh, let's come to the influence, which Tamane sir has said very well. Leadership is all about influence. Nothing less, nothing more. And I don't say this. Anybody has heard about uh, John C. Maxwell? You can type it down if, if you have heard about it. 
John C. Maxwell is the world's leading propagator of leadership, leadership communication, leadership behavior. And he says every leadership, if you call somebody as a leader, that is always an influence. If you are influenced by somebody, you can call him a leader. If you are not influenced or negatively influenced, that's a negative leader. If positively influenced, that is a positive leader, great, good to great leader. And that's how influence is most important. And why influence? In sales, always, I have spent a lot of time in sales. In sales, we always say, before selling the product, you have to sell yourself. If people are not ready, if people are not comfortable with you, they cannot be comfortable in doing any transaction with you. Make people comfortable with you first. Make your influence deeply rooted in their minds so that they are ready to follow you. And if they are not following you, chances are they will not follow whatever you say. So your communication is or your connection with your people, with your student is the direct sign of your quality of communication that the people are receiving. So if you are not able to influence, will not be able to influence their behavior also will not be able to get what we want from them. So it's always about influence, influence, and only influence. Check how many people they get your words right. How many students they are loving you. How many students they are wanting to come to your classes. How many students they are following your, uh, whatever you say, your instructions. If not, we have to check that we are following short of influence. And if people are following us, no doubt there will always be the students, whatever you do, they will not come to you. They, they will have their own world and they will stay over there. I'm not talking about the 100% achievement of this. It cannot be possible. But just check either 50%, 55%, 60% students are following you. They are doing what you are saying. And this is what it happens. Recently, we started uh, telling the students, my, my uh, colleague Pravartan and I, we started telling the students how to enter the class. You know, you, you would have also experienced this. How the student enters in your class? He just stands in front of the door and does this. May I come in, sir? Yes or no? Uh, type yes if you have experienced this, type no if you don't experience it. They make the aeroplane or flight like this with their one hand. May I come in, sir? May I come in, ma'am? They do it. And we, we then when we inquired, they said, sir, this has been uh, taught to us when we are in the schools. And this is irrespective of the region. See, South, uh, the people, people, who, students who come from South, they do it the same. And the Maharashtra students, they also are following the same gesture. So this is called influence. Throughout the uh, 10th, 12th, 8th, 9th, they have been doing this. And this is what they are doing. We are asking them to learn the new way, the professional way of getting the entry. And now they are doing it because we are getting it done because they are convinced. Yes, this is what it is important for us. We are getting it done. So this is how we, we just need to check whether the influence is there or not. And this is the bedrock of everything. And what is the best way of fastest way of influencing your students or influencing your people, your communication. It's your communication only by which you influence people positively or negatively. If people are coming to you, it is your positive influence because of your positive communication. If people are repelling you, if they are going away from you, they don't want to be with you. Again, I am telling not everybody, but chunk of people, chunk of the students, if they are coming to you, following you, that is the charisma of your communication. That is the ultimate goal of your communication, that people are coming to you. The students are getting influenced by your communication. So communication is the fastest way of influencing. No, you might all be agreeing that this is the way we communicate. I, I'm, I don't want to go for the definition of communication. We all are communicators. We continuously we do the communication with our students. So this, these are the four ways with which we communicate. It, it would be either verbal communication. We speak and that's how we communicate. We teach them. We instruct them. And this is how we communicate. Second is the non-verbal. The way we are using our body, our face, our hands, 
that is the communication that we do that is called non verbal communication then we have the written communication we write some letters to them we write in front of the class on the boards or we do the written communication digitally right we write the mails we write the messages to them that is the written communication and sometimes visual communication we show them some pictures we act in front of them so this is all the visual communication we show them show some data to them we show some maps to them right some charts to them so that is all visual communication now there is uh, you might also be aware of uh, one uh, psychologist that is his name is albert mehrabian in 1960s from 1960s he has propagated this ratio of communication and how much our communication affects in, in different different elements of communication so we usually think that the communication is whatever we are saying to our students usually when i ask the students what is communication they say it's the uh, exchange of ideas from one to the another person that is communication but yes we don't exchange the ideas only with our words Right. So we exchange the ideas with least of. I am. I'm very sorry. This is eight percent. Now this is actually seven percent. So there, there's a typo mistake. So it is seven percent only. What we talk about words. Now right now, whatever I am doing, the way I am talking, the way I am inflating, inflating my voice. This is how we communicate to our students. This makes a big difference. This is how we communicate to our students. This is how we communicate to our students. Words are same, but the impact is totally different. And that's how Albert Mehrabian says only 7% is the importance or weightage of the words is there. But 38%, how do we use our voice? That is what it is called vocal 38% impact goes of our vocal communication. And this has a great importance in our life when still today, when we go in front of our parents. Kya kar raha hai? Kya chalu hai? They, they can also say kya chalu hai? Kya chalu hai? Meaning is totally different in kya chalu hai and kya chalu hai? Vocal makes a difference meaning is entirely different then it's a body language how do you use you you are talking to one person over here to your student and you are facing the other student your body language so your student gets the message sir ko mere mein interest nahi madam ko mere mein interest nahi madam se main jo baat karne ja raha hu madam ko uski seriousness samajh mein nahi aa raha body language the way you use your gestures it 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 animates your communication the way i am using this gesture the hands right now it is animating my communication and it is giving more weightage to my communication right now so whenever we are in front of our students we need to take care of these three parameters very carefully are we using only words or are we using our voice in a proper way or not to make a different meaning of our communication of our words and then body language it has got the game changer effect in our entire communication it is 55% even if you don't say anything to your your student you just stare your student your student comes and say madam ye mere se nahi hua aaj aur main nahi kar paya just stare the student the student will have a different feeling he may still come uh, uh, nahi madam wo wo reason nahi tha i'll tell you the right reason your body language you don't say anything your eyes are saying everything so this is how you can make a difference in your communication 7% 38% 55% so only 45% is through your vocal and your verbal but 55% is non verbal we can't ignore the importance of this non verbal and we have to use it so just uh, wanted to make sure that we all uh, have this process of communication this is called the process of communication we communicate something to somebody we are the sender and we do the encoding basically we thought we, we use our thought process how to communicate what will i say which way i will say either it will be starting with some story or i'll directly jump to the lecture or i'll uh, talk about the practical first everything you are thinking about that is encoding 
right? And then you form the entire message that this is what I am going to say today in the class. And there are the channels. Obviously, nanotis are just uh, focused on the e-content that you create the e-content that is a channel. You are standing in front of your students. That is one channel that you are getting one on one. You are talking to them. That is one on one channel. Then you make one content on YouTube or you make your video content. You float it to your groups. That is video content. That is one channel. You talk to your students on phone. A student calls you up. You talk to your student on phone. That is another channel. You do a voice message. That is one more channel. So we need to decide which channel is best suited and in which context, basically. The channel is different. Then there is a receiver. And then the way a sender encodes the message, receiver also decodes it. So in NLP, in Neuro Linguistic Programming, which Manisha Deshmukh, Madam, uh, took it the day before yesterday, in NLP it is said the meaning or the entire communication is not what has been spoken. The entire communication is what has been understood. You said anything to your student, but what he understood, what she understood the meaning of, that is your actual communication, not what you said. And therefore, the entire responsibility, it falls upon the sender to make the communication as effective as possible, designed for the receiver. Right? And how do we understand the decoding? We understand their decoding by their feedback. We are saying something, but the students are not giving any feedback. Hey, you, what have you done? The student is sitting over there, not responding, not giving any attention to us. The student just immediately stands up and starts speaking something. Feedback. And the student sitting over there, the student starts uh, speaking, murmuring. Oh, Madam, actually, uh, I committed a, a mistake. You get the feedback. And then somebody comes very boldly. Madam, this is not my mistake. Somebody else has done this. You understand their feedback through their responses. That is the response. And then again, you change your way of communication based on the feedback. The maximum time in our communication we have to spend on the feedback, how we are receiving those feedbacks. Because they are our cues. We understand those cues and then we expand our communication. How should we go ahead out of this communication? So this is what a simple process. I think many of you would be knowing this process, but this process is not very important. The coming uh, things are more important for us. I hope everybody is aware of uh, pedagogy. This pedagogy and andragogy are uh, two different uh, modes of uh, teaching basically how people learn and these are the methodologies with which uh, we make sure that uh, the audience they learn maximum from us the pedagogy is the science is the method where it is moderated by the teacher where it requires a teacher where it requires a facilitator to flow that information to learn something the people who are learning over there they are teacher dependent that is what pedagogy is andragogy is that how adults learn the things pedagogy is how children they learn the things because children are mostly teacher dependent the teacher takes the lead and they start the communication they start the lectures and they make them make sure that students understand whatever you are saying so this pedagogy says that you should have inclusion in your methods. You should involve each and everybody in your communication. Each and every child sitting in the class should be involved in your communication. No child should be left alone. No, should, nobody should, be, uh, should, feel, uh, should feel aloof. That I'm not uh, being chance. I'm not given the chance to uh, interact. Or somebody is not inter they, there are some introverts in your class you might also be knowing them but are you deliberately going and talking to them because you are getting the responses from the extroverts you ask something extroverts immediately come and say this is what it is this is what i have understood this is i did not understand but introverts don't come on their own you have to pay attention to them so whether you are involving those introverts or not 
we learned how the way students they learn they are visual they are auditory they are kinesthetic so are we involving each and everybody because their learning process is totally different we need to take care of that then it should be motivation oriented the student should be motivated after we have completed our lectures each and every lecture the, the student should feel motivated i have got something and i have to go ahead and this is the responsibility of us we teachers we trainers that they should they should feel motivated of this topic about us more than the topic about us somebody is coming anju madam is coming shalini madam is coming somebody is coming and i will get something good over here motivation because here in pedagogy when the children when there is teacher dependent motivation also is dependent on the teacher if the teachers are teachers are able to transfer those motivation that motivation to the student they will come back to us otherwise they will still be sitting in the class but with the mental blankness pedagogy says we have to continuously improve the quality we have to make sure that our quality is improving the students are getting newness in our quality they are thinking that yes it was better than yesterday consistency something works well so we have to continue it consistently we have to take the action so that the students are motivated so that our quality is improving transparency absolute transparency is required in leadership communication and in pedagogy because students are continuously observing us and if you are not able to maintain that transparency they are also observing that something is being hidden from me and i don't know everything so absolutely yes there are some of the things which we cannot tell the students they are absolutely secret or they are related to or limited to you only that you only should know it but rest of the things always transparency in your class in your attitude or in your demeanor in the class innovative approaches just like nano teacher said go for e classes go for your use social media as as far as you can or as much as you can because this innovation is being seen by your student also i think there would be no student who would be out of instagram or out of facebook nowadays they all are there and because we teachers we trainers are lagging behind in using those technologies they understand that they don't have the knack of using technology well we are mostly limited to youtube we are just consuming everything on youtube but are we disseminating those uh, those those knowledge banks to others are we doing something on social media are we using instagram for our image making see because students are very sharp they understand that my teacher does not understand how to use social media and that's how he bring, he will bring more things out of social media and you will not know about this so when you start your social media accounts so efficiently with your purpose again coming to the leadership goals common goals when you connect them with your common goals of motivation of improvement of innovation they will connect to you well there are students i i write every day on linkedin there are students who come and say sir aapka ye wala article mujhe padha sir sir aapka wo wala article bahut acha tha sir and they they some of the students they revert me i basically talk on leadership they they revert me back sir leader yadi aisa karega to kaisa hoga then i give them the clarification i give them the explanation this is what the leader has to do they are interested and because now they are interested when they come to the age when they come to the final year they will require linkedin they will require social media for their benefit and then they will come to you and that's how you become their leader because you have adequately used social media till now so you will be able to guide them so again you are without position you will become their leader so that's how the pedagogy is very well designed and it has to be followed now i won't go ahead this is, this is also i downloaded it somewhere but it was of very much use but i i can forward this because time will not uh, allow us to go ahead with that now this is completely shifting just simple one thing is that uh, learning is uh, determined by the innate biological abilities but the new definition says the new change that says that learning depends on what is made available to learn and how much time learners have become proficient at it 
we have to show them these are the different ways and means of learning. Not only one and conventional way of teacher going, speaking something, they are understanding, whether understanding or not, whether we are following it or not, teacher goes out, done. No, there are several ways and means because of the technologies in evolving, we have also to evolve and we have to make sure that learning takes place at every point of time. Every time when we are walking, they are learning from us. When we are speaking, they are learning from us. When we are using social media in a different way, they are learning from us. We have to use each and every resource for our benefit, for their benefit. Now, there are some barriers also when we talk about the communication, when we are communicating to them and why they are not understanding. Again, I am coming back. Communication is not what has been said. Communication is always what has been understood. So there are some barriers like psychological barriers, preconceived thought. The, the receiver has already a preconceived thought. Somebody told that ki ye teacher ki class mein mat jana. Any senior, Arre ye teacher ki class mein mere ko kuch samajh mein nahi aaya tha. And that's why you come to know that ki he is not very much attentive in your class also. That is a preconceived thought. Somebody told him and that is why he is not able to focus in your class. Prejudices. He has his own prejudices. He likes some other teachers. So that's a different thing. We have to make sure how can we, we how can we make ourselves more interesting in the class. Some people are very sarcastic, either from the sender or from the receiver point. Some people are very sarcastic. They, they have their sarcastic attitude. Sometimes we also be very sarcastic to our students. Being very sarcastic, we just throw the cold shoulder, we, we throw the cold water to their attitude, to, to their learning capabilities. We become sarcastic, we become a stereotype. Acha tu hi hai na wo, jisne nahi kiya tha. Acha tu hi hai na jisne masti kiya tha. Acha tu hi hai na jisko rusticate kiya tha. It becomes a stereotype. Ter se pehle nahi bana tha, isliye aaj bhi ter se nahi ban paega. There are some semantic like jargons. Many of us may be using jargons, right? Some some students may not understand jargon at first first place. We, you have to make them understand, and then be at their place, be in their shoes. We have poor poor communication skills, so that is one of the biggest disadvantage with us that we are not able to communicate well, and that's why whatever we say that has not been understood the same way we wanted people to understand. Physical and environmental, that is how we do it. Means whether we are sitting, where are we sitting? Is it calm, cool place or not? Or it's silence or not? That is the barrier. Mental state is the barrier. If some, some student is there in the stress, anxiety, and you think that he is not able to catch whatever you say, that is, we need to understand. He may be in anxiety, he may be in stress, due to any reason. And now because this generation is suffering from so many reasons, we also don't cannot count them we have to pay special attention to what is happening inside their mind. And that's why they are not attentive. Language barriers, here we understand very well because in, in Saikeda, we have in agriculture, we have many students coming from South. So when we, we talk to them, how are you? Very few people respond. When we say, hello now, we say, we learned a little bit of Telugu. Just little bit. How are you? Hello, now. Bow now. They, they become so excited and they share more things from uh, with us. And that's how we need to understand their language also. So little bit of language understanding. So that creates a great rapport between us and them. And that's how we can get more connected to them. And then the language barrier is absolutely destroyed uh, or uh, eliminated once you get connected to them. Attitude, too much information, don't give too much information unless we ensure that this provided information has very well been imbibed and absorbed by the students. Cultural differences is there. Abbreviation, some people don't understand. So we need to make, make sure that we are saying whatever we say. Now, when we speak, basically, we, we, we can't ignore the verbal communication. When we basically speak, we have three things, and these three things have been propagated by Aristotle. 
Aristotle's theory of persuasion. When it comes to influ influence, persuasion is always associated with influence because if you pursue somebody and person gets agreed upon, next time the chances are he will get agreed, he or she will get agreed more. So Aristotle has given three concepts of how to speak. One is logos, one is ethos, and the third one is pathos. Let's go ahead and uh, have a brief uh, introduction of what is logos basically. Logos say that you have to speak to somebody in such a way so, so that they feel that it is about me. It is reasonable. It is rational. It is my point of view. The students should feel that the teacher is talking from my point of view. They should feel connected to, yes, this is the teacher. Yes, sir, this is what I wanted to say. When this comes from their own mouth, you feel that, yes, your logos is absolutely bang on. You should be speaking from their point of view. We need to understand them first. And that is very well known fact that understand first to be understood. Understand first what they want, what they want and which way they want from us. Of course, I am not saying to fulfill their unreasonable demands. But their point of view, be in their shoes, what they want basically. Be ready with the facts and statistics. Whatever the facts and statistics are there, when you are communicating with them, be bang on them. Be absolutely correct with them. This is what Logos say. Being, understanding the person from his or her point of view. And there comes ethos. Ethos is the topmost priority as per the Aristotle says. Without ethos, one cannot establish one's credibility and authenticity. This is the personal credibility of a teacher, a teacher leader. If we don't have the credibility, we cannot rule them, we cannot rule their minds. And we build that credibility. Credibility is something that you also have. You trust some people because of some reasons. We don't, we don't trust other people because we have our own reasons. But that bottom line reason is that they don't have a credibility in our minds of theirs. So this, this is said, Aristotle says that you can build this credibility by two ways. One is your position and qualification. You tell them that, yes, I am PhD. I have done uh, so many research uh, and I have published so many uh, papers. But that usually doesn't work with the students and with the human beings. Your position usually doesn't work. Your credibility works the way you speak. The way you speak to the peak bulb because it is all about the human connections. I, I don't know anything about your PhD. I don't know anything about your qualification, but I know how you are behaving with me right now. And that is what connects me to you. So your credibility is established the way you speak to the people. And there are three ways to, to establish that credibility. One, be energetic. Whenever we are speaking, the energy is the topmost priority of that motivation, of that credibility. Because energy says that you love the way you are doing something. That is the sign of credibility. Your energy says that you absolutely love. You love to be here. You love to teach me. You love your job. You love being with me. That is disseminated by energy. Low energy, no response. Satisfactory, nobody loves it. It is so-so. Then second thing is your dressing. I see so many of the, the teachers. They come on chapel. See, the students, we are asking students to come and dress. And we ourselves, we don't come. I'm very sorry if somebody does that, but I don't want to go very personal. But this is what my observation is that. We are asking people, we are asking students to be professional, to be future ready. And we are coming in chapel. We are wearing the same shirt for two or three days. But this is what we are showing our credibility. And this is what sometimes they don't believe us. This is what they mock us behind us. This is how we lose our credibility. This is the first impression, the dressing is the first impression. The people, that's why I said, before selling the product, you have to sell yourself. So before selling, 
your lectures before selling your concepts we have to sell ourselves first we have to make them understand we have to make them feel that i i am important and that is how your dressing shows everything about you dressing that establishes credibility and then your gestures and body language of course if you are very much interested in people your body language will show that you are interested a student comes to you a student in the class talking to you and you are not looking at that student you are looking at the other crowd you are searching for somebody else and that's how your credi credibility is lost the student understands he or she is not interested in me why the hell i am speaking over here in front of the the teacher we need to understand that at this particular time this boy this girl is important for me i need to give the utmost importance to this boy and girl when we start doing that many of us we do it but i'm just repeating this is the way we establish our credibility and aristotle says that out of logos pathos and ethos ethos is the most important thing because that is the starting point of our credibility that is the starting point of our influence influence is leadership then comes this uh, this is also one of the important things when we talk when we communicate to our students emotions are most important thing because it is said you will forget the name of the person you will forget the face of the person but you will never forget the way he made you feel with him or with her if you make people feel good about you they will come back to you they will have good notion of you if you make them feel insulted if you make them feel inferior they will never ever come back to you so are we able to generate those emotions when we are communicating to them or not that's very much important so it can happen with two ways that first and foremost thing feel the same emotion that your student is feeling that is most of the time it is not possible because we are not that superhuman that whatever the person is feeling we can also feel that also can be done it's not something that is not impossible it also can be done but it takes time it takes our self awareness meditation self awareness if we know ourselves then only we know people will but it takes time and it takes inclination towards that also but the second thing is we can generate those emotions with storytelling storytelling is the most important thing in our life that we get connected to the stories because our minds are hardwired to stories and these stories they generate a lot of emotion in us during our childhood our granny used to tell us stories and that's how our brain is hardwired so when you tell the stories to your students tell a story of your failure tell a story of your success i tell the story to my students when i go inside the class i tell them i i, I give them the structure of self introduction and there they, i ask them to uh, count your achievements what are your achievements and i tell them there are some achievements where they will get the certificates but there are even bigger achievements where they cannot get their certificates i tell them when i was in class 4 i was punished in front of the entire class i was beaten by the rule that that a circular round or a spherical rule and my my principal he he punished me for with four rules and out of this four rules when it was just second rule i did this i urinated in, in front of the entire class when i was in entire school when i was in class 4 but i decided that day with that shame with that embarrassment that i will do something in this school only and that school was till class 8 only it was the uh, middle school till middle school and then in class 8 i became the school captain of that class with the, uh, standing on the same stage where i was punished and i was embarrassed i ruled that school entire school for one entire year but nobody is going to give me the certificate but for me this is one of the biggest achievements of my life that i proved my leadership skills i took that event as my motivation as my inspiration and i did something similarly you also have some stories of yours where you are the inspiration for yourself then the students 
they just just silently and with the utmost focus they they listen to the story and some of the student after that they they also came to me sir how how was you feeling at that particular time how are you feeling i said it it's very difficult to feel that but yes we have to learn from those things and we have to make our failures our motivation stories connect tell the stories find the stories out of your regular lectures how you can connect your lectures to some story how can one difficult topic can be associated with one, one story so that they remember even when they go home and even they come back even of 10 years later and they understand this story was associated with this particular topic stories they generate emotions and emotions are forever i think you you also might have gone with this because uh, time will not permit us to do more what makes our communication more effective it should be clear it should be concise it should be concrete correct coherent complete and courteous we'll go ahead a little bit in this this clear it means that you should be completely focused on the goal what you want to achieve with this communication what do you want to do with this communication what is your goal of doing this communication that should be first in your mind when you start your communication i want the students to be completely knowing this particular topic so every time whatever you are communicating the one thing is always in mind whether they are understanding this or not whether they are getting this or not or i need to make some corrections in my communication getting the feedback should i say something else if they are not connecting with this type of learning or this type of teaching should i change my words should i change my tone should i change my body language but it should be at most clear what i want to gain out of this communication end should always be in mind before you start communicating to your students just a minute i'm sure everybody is there because i, I cannot see the screen now hello yes yes sir yes sir yeah, uh, i'm sure i'm not boring you people no sir it's a very informative and very practical yeah so it should be concise for concise i always give and it is always there uh, an acronym for concise kiss kiss it just kiss it kiss it means keep it short and simple don't beat around the bush don't don't give so many uh, non related stories be very sharp focused on whatever you want to communicate but this is what this generation is more focused on kaam ki baatein kar rahi hai kaam ki baat hai we are also very much focused on that and they are also living in the same age kaam ki baatein kar rahe hain don't beat around the bush too much don't make too many prefaces of the lectures that we are going to talk about or even apart from the lectures what we are communicating to them use less words and more meanings out of these words don't beat around the bush when it comes to concrete it should always be action oriented what action do you want out of this communication from your student i want the action that they should be able to i make the reading uh, uh, exercise with them i make sure that each and every completes that reading exercise and then should be able to connect with their learning of their particular subjects so i make sure the it should be action oriented so that whatever i teach them whatever i train them in right now they should go and apply this to their regular studies concrete action oriented there should be some action out of this there should be the feedback and the feedback which i want which i desire from my communication that feedback should always be desired correct we, we should always give the correct data no verification should be required after that right all verified data should be there in our communication then it should be complete there should be no room for confusion it should always be com complete whatever the details are there the right example of complete communication is that the way we receive lagna patrika invitation card of any marriage in that marriage each and everything is given it is action oriented invitation action oriented you have to come then it is given when is the marriage when are you invited whether you are invited in the marriage or not you are invited only in the reception between 7 and 9 where is the what is the venue 
Where's the venue of this reception? This is the venue. Who is the girl? Who is the boy? Who, what is the name of the boy's father? What is the name of the girl's parents? Everything is given over there. And it is action oriented. When the person comes to you and says, Aana hi hai, koi bahana nahi chalega. Concrete. Aana hi hai. And complete information is there. No room for communication. So, what is the sign of completeness? When the students come and ask the new question, that is the sign of completeness. People don't ask the question related to our information. You generate some curiousness in them and, and they come back to you asking new questions. That is the sign of completeness. That you have given all the information regarding that topic, regarding that particular subject at that particular time. Should be complete. Then it should be considered, it should be coherent. The logics which we give in our information should be well connected and should be hierarchical. Logic 1, logic 2, logic 3, logic 4. This is what should you study, why you should study and who has studied earlier and what is the benefit of studying this? What can you achieve out of this? Complete logic flow, it should be coherent. Then it is coherent. Then it is. Then it should be considered. You must consider the receiver's point of view. They are the students. Which way you have to connect? If you become so sophisticated because you are PhD, you are knowledgeable, you have gained how, uh, enormous knowledge, but you can't connect to them because you cannot go down to their level, you will not be able to communicate effectively. You have to go to their level. You have to find out what connects to them and be open to change your communication according to them. Always remember, always consider the level of recipient. Our level is not important. Their level is important for us because leadership is all about people, people and people. And that's why I always say, is knowledge power? Anyone can just uh, shoot the message. Do you think knowledge, knowledge is power? I just wait for one chat or is knowledge power? Anybody? I just want to check whether no. Oh my God. <laughs> knowledge is not a power. It's half truth. Very nice. Yes. Knowledge is only power when you are able to deliver it when you are able to transfer it. Otherwise, your knowledge is within your vessel, this spherical vessel. Unless and until we are able to deliver it effectively, unless and until the people are able to have a bind of this knowledge, there is no use of this knowledge. Knowledge is always to be imparted. Then it is power. When your knowledge can inspire somebody, when your knowledge can give some actionable insights to someone then this is a transfer of knowledge otherwise it is only for the show off otherwise it is only for the degrees that i have done something but people are getting no benefits out of it then knowledge is not a power power should always flourish power should always generate more power and that is how if we are able to deliver it then it is the power and we have to deliver it effectively so that people buy it Courteous, obviously we need to be polite. This is one of the most important things with some of the teachers which I have seen. Be polite with them. It takes nothing to be polite with them. They may have any background. You may have any uh, past experience with them, but be polite. Okay, how can we? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Be polite. So talk politely. They also deserve the politeness. They also deserve the due respect. If they are a student, doesn't mean that we, we are so much educated. And because if we are polite, we show this is how it means and what it means to be educated. There is a big difference between literacy and education. We getting the bigger degrees is not the sign of our education. That is the sign of our literacy. We being polite, we being effective communicator, that is the sign of our education. That says that, yes, we are educated. Need to be polite. It should percolate, it should reflect through our communication, through our politeness. Yes, we are educated. 
so for the maximum move your body use your non verbal communication for the maximum impact as i said 55% is the share of our body language and that is how we can generate the maximum impact within our people within our students so that they follow us non verbal body language do the eye contact with your students whenever the student comes have the eye contact every time and have the eye contact suppose you ask one student come on let me let me have the idea what you understood with this lecture or with this concept then when the student is speaking have the eye contact with the student continuous eye contact till the time the student is speaking student is speaking to you eye contact at the same time when everything ends up have the eye contact to each and every student to the last venture also because eyes are something which never lie eyes never lie if the student is is, is not ready to sit with you if the student has done something wrong student will put down the eyelids he or she will not make any eye contact with you if they are wrong but this eye contact is very powerful and it is it is usually said if you want to extract more information from people just ask them one question and have the eye contact just just similarly if i ask you one question and just i stay over here looking into your eyes done the person will come on and say and say more actually when you have the eye contact people share more because they know that you are interested in them have the, those eye contacts and one tip to have the eye contact good eye contact is that you try to figure out what is the color of uh, the pupil the retina what is the color is it uh, black brown blue or some other shade try to figure it out because by the time you figure it out you would have already established the eye contact with the person figure it out have the eye contact with each and every one especially with your students because that shows your confidence that shows your involvement with the student the student also uh, gets the reflection yes he or she is interested in me they want to listen to me facial expressions give facial expressions give give the happy expressions and jovial expressions i have seen some of the uh, teachers ha uh, kya hai ha uh, ho gaya tumhara kaam चलो जाओ अपनी क्लास में जाओ ढंग से बैठो ये आपको बोला था ना कल एप्लीकेशन लाना है आपकी आपने क्यों नहीं लाई आपकी एप्लीकेशन आपकी द स्टूडेंट शुड बी एंगेज विद यू एंड फेशियल एक्सप्रेशंस आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दिस इज द इनविटेशन लेटर हाँ बेटा क्या हुआ कल बोला था ना आपको एप्लीकेशन लाना है क्यों नहीं लाई आपने क्या हो गया फोन क्यों नहीं किया फिर मुझे आपने फोन करना ही चाहता ना बेटा यदि आपको कुछ समझ में नहीं आया तो गिव अ स्माइल 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 इज द मोस्ट कंटेजियस थिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड नथिंग इज मोर कंटेजियस देन स्माइल बी हैप्पी बी जोवियल बिकॉज व्हेन यू आर हैप्पी एंड बी सीरियसली इंटरेस्टेड इन पीपल सीरियसली इंटरेस्टेड इन योर स्टूडेंट्स एंड दैट डे तुषार सर सेड आर यू एबल टू लव योर स्टूडेंट्स एज मच एज यू कैन लव योर ओन चिल्ड्रन that is the sign of a great teacher can you love your students as much as you can love your own children be interested be genuinely interested in your people in your students understand their problems because i have so many students they come and talk to me their own problems their own difficulties at their home and and you also might be having some of the students many of the teachers i have seen many of the teachers the students go to them share their personal problems also when i was working in priyadarshini there was a guy who who was from bihar he came to me and he cried a lot and i was not able to control his cry and he was weeping and the tears were dropping down from her cheeks from his cheeks and he said sir and do you know what was the problem सर मेरी गर्लफ्रेंड ने मुझे धोखा दे दिया दैट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम एंड आई थॉट यार गर्लफ्रेंड इज इन बिहार एंड ही इज कमिंग ओवर हियर एंड टॉकिंग टू मी 
and i was i was absolutely out of idea how can i help this person but at least one thing that helped me to listen to that person to be genuinely interested in this 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 guy he is coming he is coming because if he is coming to me telling these things it means that he has got some trust on me that he can share his problems with me and then still i remember uh, one year ago or one year and a half ago he messaged me i did not remember his name i, I did not remember even the event also he he messaged each and everything sir do you remember i am from bihar and this and this things now sir everything has been settled and i am happy and i have the other girlfriend now he was happy he was sharing his personal things what else can be an achievement for a trainer or for a teacher if the students they are sharing the personal problems and their personal achievements with you this is the result of these happy facial expressions you are always welcoming your students your postures your posture talks a lot and especially for a leader posture is very much important a leader never sits down like this a, a leader never slouches his shoulders a leader never has a weak body language sit straight whenever you are sitting in front of the student sit straight have your chin parallel to your floor always look little bit upper use your gestures posture upright and don't lean don't lean one way like hero or actress straight because that is the message your students get from you madam is serious sir is serious and i can look up to them and they are my role model i still remember uh, my principal of that same school who who punished me but i have a huge respect for this person because he was ex army unfortunately he is no more now he was ex army the type of discipline he had i still salute him and that is what i learned from him and it benefited a lot to me i followed his discipline um, uh, rules and it helped me a lot and that is what i i just percolate to all my students nowadays posture is very much important it shows somebody that what type of person you are are you serious are you casual or what i don't say that you don't have to be casual but there are different contexts where you have to be casual and where you have to be serious in front of the students be absolutely serious about yourself your profession not with your facial expression vocal tone inflections they mean a lot anju ma'am what time it is anju ma'am what time it is yes sir Ah, sorry, ma'am. I just using it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I know. It is half an hour. Yes, sir. Twenty-five now, so I have twenty-five uh, more minutes. Yes. Yes, sir. Vocal tone. We 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 use our vocal tone. Hey, beta, what happened? Hey, beta, what happened? Hey, beta, what happened? At the end, my voice is going up. Hey, beta, what happened? Voice is going up. This is a question mark. and this is the sign of weak communication this is a sign of a weak leader this is a sign of a confused leader hey beta kya hua voice going down at the end this is authority this is solution oriented person this is resourceful person take your down voice down when you are coming to a conclusion when you are offering some solution take the voice down मेरे पास आ जा मैं तेरी हेल्प करता हूं मेरे पास आ जा मैं तेरी हेल्प करता हूं क्वेश्चन मार्क सर करेंगे कि नहीं करेंगे पता नहीं चार बजे मिलना हम लोग बैठेंगे आई विल हेल्प यू चार बजे मिलना हम लोग बैठेंगे आई विल हेल्प यू क्वेश्चन मार्क आई विल हेल्प यू डाउनवर्ड्स वो कल टोन मीन्स अलॉट gestures i said use different gestures because they animate your communication use your hands you know what is the most important gesture that you can give to your students showing the palms showing your palms is the message that you are safe for them they can trust you it's like surrender see whenever the army people they surrender they they just have this palms open and showing they says i am safe i cannot hurt you 
सो वेन यू शो योर पाम्स नॉट लाइक बेटा पाम देख लो मेरे आई एम सेफ हाँ तुमको कोई डर नहीं होगा मेरे से नॉट लाइक दैट बट वेन एवर यू आर यूजिंग योर जेस्चर ट्राई टू शो योर पाम्स दिस वे इसको ये बोलते हैं इसको ऐसा बोलते हैं सो दैट दे विल बी एबल टू सी योर पाम्स शोइंग योर पाम्स दिस इज अ साइन दैट यू आर सेफ फॉर देम दे कैन सेफली कम टू यू यू आर हार्मलेस right to so use your gestures more smile as i said a smile is nothing is more contagious than smile in this world it builds rapo faster it is an invitation later and why smile is contagious because biologically in our brain we have mirror neurons mirror neurons and you all know that you are from science faculty and some other faculty also you know that we have neurons and in our brain we have a type of neurons that are, that are called mirror neurons and these neurons these neurons they help us to understand somebody others emotion they they force us to feel those emotions if somebody is sad you cannot go in front of him or her and start laughing <laughs> are bade hi sad lag rahe ho yaar we cannot do that you never ever will be able to you try it and if you do it somebody will call you insane this is because of mirror neurons and when you smile the other people are also forced to smile and that's why smile is more contagious every emotion is contagious and that's how some of us who are very emotional they go and go to some sad movie and they also have their tears rolling down their cheeks emotions emotions are very contagious and out of those emotions a smile is the most contagious thing give a smile to your students when you are listening. most important thing is listening 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 out of the entire communication skills this holds 80% 82 listening skills why listening skills because in this world nobody is ready to listen to others people are always busy in showing their potential showing their importance but people are not ready to listen to others listening is the most important art of communication listening takes three or four things five things receiving what people are saying to you it's a big process receiving what what right now what i am saying to you you are receiving then you are understanding what alok joshi is talking to you people you are understanding this some of the things you are remembering might be uh, at the end if you have some questions you will ask me so you are remembering this then you are evaluating what is the purpose of alok saying this what what could be the meaning of this is this the same thing which i am understanding you are evaluating everything and then you are responding some are responding with the messages some are responding sitting there only nodding this some are responding with yes 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 it happened with me so you are always responding so this is listening this is very much important because every each and every of your communication is based on how you listen to others and that is the basis of how you respond to others so listening we have different styles of listening some people they listen to be very critical acha aisa hai acha tera waisa hai acha tu ye bol raha hai iska matlab ye nikalta hai critical hai na aur we always try to find the mistakes of others nahi teri yahi galti hogi pichli baar bhi tune aise kiya tha yahi galti hogi teri isliye aisa hai we are task focused some people want to know what is the end result jaldi bolo iska farak kya pada task focused yaar itni baatein mat karo mujhe batao kya karna hai abhi come to the question come to the question don't don't beat around the bush some people listen for this some people listen to analyze acha iska ye aisa ho raha hoga na ye ye soch kar ke bol raha hoga hai na acha ye iska kehne ka ye matlab hoga analyzing dissecting each and everything rational relation building connection some people they listen because they want to build connection they want to find what could be that connecting link to that person that i can take hold of that i can take advantage of some people listen to connect so uh, listening has two things one is the act of listening whatever people are saying we are hearing acha aapne ye kaha aapne wo kaha aapne wo kaha and then there is a the art of listening the art of listening has the bigger possibility for us we can have so many things by just listening to people well and there are four levels of listening 
It's not only one. It's not only what you people are listening to me. It's not only one thing. We are listening with four levels. Level one is we are just hearing. We are just hearing the words. We are not paying any attention. We are busy in our mobiles and we are listening to this workshop or we are listening to somebody else. It's only words. We are only hearing. That is level zero and the worst type of listening that we can have in our life, in our communication. Level one listening is there where you confirm that you already know. And you this, this way you interrupt others also. And somebody is telling this happened with me. Ah, this happened with me also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you start your own chain. And somebody says, yeah, this happened in my class. And there was a girl and who started crying. Ah, it happened with me, my class also. But see, I tell you, these are all fake people. These are all tantrums of these girls and students. Have you listened? What, what was the purpose of that person saying? No. We try to confirm or we try to con uh, contradict. No, 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 this is wrong. This is wrong. These students are not like that. Let me, let me just interrupt you. Let me just correct you. We Alexa? Yes, madam. I think there is some technical issue.
Uh, everyone, please uh, wait uh, some due to technical issues. हाँ जी मैडम आवाज आ रही क्या मेरी यहाँ से भी तो आई थिंक देर विल बी इशू इन शेयरिंग दी पी पी टी बट वी वी कैन स्टिल गेट कनेक्टेड एंड यूटिलाइज अवर टाइम फुली Sir, your PPT is showing. Sir. Yes, yes. My PPT is visible now, but it's okay. Okay. I think we were here, right? To be a curious. Am I visible now? Uh, yes, sir. Now it is visible. Isi But isi kam. Okay, so uh, we were uh, at the level four that what we can do. 
so it is basically understanding the meaning behind what the purpose what the people what the people are saying our students are saying so that is most important thing that we can do so what is more important when we talk about listening others keeping ourselves calm and cool and not having that urge to cut in between not having the urge to jump it between not coming to the conclusion immediately listen everything what the person is saying and then try to understand what could be why he or she could be saying like this till yesterday this student was okay but why he or she is saying like this is there anything something something going wrong in his or her house or some relationship issue or the fighting within the friends or some some nowadays because there are so many issues with the students they have a boyfriend girlfriend sort of so many other things and you never know what could go wrong with them and that's how it's it's very much important it's very much important to understand them and at this level this our responsibility the leadership responsibility that we understand what is unspoken it's very easy to hear and understand yes this has been said but it's very difficult and it takes a lot of effort to understand the people's intention now listening is basically it's an active thing and this is two way street it can never ever happen one way it always is a two way street that you always listen others people will listen to you and that's why we said understand to be understood understand to be understood and always third time i say understand to be understood never ever try to be understood unless you understand people unless you understand your students be non judgmental absolutely non judgmental when you are listening then we have ample time to think about why he would have said or she would have said but first and foremost thing be absolutely non judgmental when we are listening that time is totally focused only for listening listening and listening finding out what is going wrong what is going right with this so that is how listening is very much important so what to do when we listen to we listen to understand and how can we do that first and foremost thing we have to paraphrase suppose somebody is saying to you madam mai kal nahi aa paunga aapki class mein ya madam mai is, is internship mein nahi ja paunga ya madam mujhe ye cheez samajh mein nahi aayi hai paraphrase acha tumhare kehne ka matlab hai ki ye cheez tumko samajh mein nahi aayi hai say this again this is from the nlp point of view when you mirror people people get connected to you faster so this is one way of connecting to people that you repeat their words paraphrase it acha tumhare kehne ka matlab hai ki samajh mein nahi aaya to unko acha chalo dekhte hain kya kya cheeze hain jo tumko samajh nahi aayi paraphrase confirm with the verbal sign when the person is speaking hmm hmm yes hmm agreed agreed let them speak more and the science of mind says psychology says when you have three yeses or you nod your head three times the people are likely to speak more somebody is saying ha ah, sorry i just start oh my god this is the problem so in between otherwise you cannot understand what i am saying about nodding your head thrice okay let it be Yeah. Can you all do at your place, wherever you are sitting? Nod your head thrice, up and down. Nod your head thrice, like this. Nod your head thrice. Hmm. With hmm, hmm, hmm. So when you do this thrice, the studies say that the people are more likely to speak more to you. they will divulge each and everything to you when you nod your head thrice right ask the specific question about whatever the people said whether you can paraphrase this or you can have your own questions also specific related to what he or she has just spoken ask open ended question to your students open ended question means they give rise to the more communication open ended questions are where they are basically yes or no when the answers they end with yes or no they are close ended questions and when the answers they come up with more text 
or more expressions, then these are the open ended questions. Let me know more about this. Can you tell me more about this? Achha, what happened that day? Okay, can we, can I have two, three more reasons? Why do you want? Why don't you want to join this internship? Open ended question. Show empathy. Don't show sympathy. Ah, yaar, bahut hi bura hua yaar tere saath mein. Ah, isliye tu nahi aa pa raha kya? Bahut bura yaar. Meri sympathy tere pura saath. Na. Oh my God, I can understand. Oh, accident ho gaya sir pe. Arey yaar. Toh bahut bura hua. Main samjh sakta hu yaar. Abhi tere dimag mein kya chal raha hoga? Right? It's it's very difficult to manage everything along with taking care of your near and dear ones. Show empathy, not the sympathy. And share sim then share similar experience, but this is a caveat in between. Share similar experiences when the person is done speaking everything, not in between. And find some link to the conversation. Conversation, the earlier link to this conversation. Acha, last time we shared aise kuch hua tha na, bhai tumhare yahan tum nahi aa paaye the. Last time bhi aise kuch hua tha. Haan sir, wo last time to mere yahan par barsa tha sir, isliye main nahi aaya tha. Is baar ki baat alag hai. So the student understands ki sir ko pata hai mere baare mein. Have a link to this understanding, to this conversation. Always create that link and show that you are listening. What are the body language cues be completely oriented to the speaker pura ka pura apne aap ko uske samne kar dijiye jab aap sun rahe hain samne wale ko aapke aapka face aapki puri body aapke pair bhi your toes should be facing to the person who sure you are listening to this is the body language cue that you are interested you are listening to me nod your hand nod your head thrice this is the rule of 3 when you nod your head thrice the people understand that yes i can speak more i need to speak more have eye contact look completely in their eyes when they are saying and you are listening smile when required not in the sad moments but smile if somebody is saying normal thing or good things okay nice yes go ahead i'm all ears go ahead Avoid using your gadgets and distractions. Beach mein mobile phone mat use kariye. Chahe kitna bhi busy ho jaye, chahe koi bhi message aa jaye aapko. Don't use your mobile phones in between. Kuch aur mat dekhiye, idhar udhar mat dekhiye. Kahin aur mat dekhiye. Pura focus kar dijiye apne aapko when you are listening because you are creating, you are establishing your credibility. You are not only listening, you are establishing your credibility. So that is why listening is the at the most important thing with you. now what are the ways we are coming close to end what are the ways to improve our communication always remember the law of 73855 only 7% is the word 38% is your intonation and 55 the highest level is your body language that shows your communication is going well or going wrong think before you speak think of the end result what could happen if we speak like this what could happen if we don't pay attention to this particular person so speak before or think before you speak lot of time what could be the end result and be very clear and concise be very clear and concise with whatever you say don't try to beat around the bush people are very busy these times even these students are very busy they have so many things in their mind so be very precise this is what we need to do and then give the required reasons for them doing this be very clear with your why why to do this why not to do this because people are more impressed by why not what's speak with confidence give energy to the people energy is very much transferable so with energy you can in inspire people with energy you can attract people towards you energy has its own language energy with energy you don't have to say anything but your energy speaks for you your confidence speaks for you be open to others perspective be ready to listen to them be ready to uh, think about their point of view also not only about you the communication is not only about us it's not about you be ready to listen to their perspective and be active and empathetic listener most importantly be active when we are listening listen to the people more rather than speaking listen listen and listen with that i end my communication and i invite if there are any questions related to this entire presentation if you want to say something if you want to ask something that's open
Ajay ma'am, over to you. If there are any questions, be it in chat or uh, in voice. I think I'm audible now. Yes, sir. You are audible properly. Yes, yes, ma'am. So I'm done with that and I hope uh, with this, this would surely help everyone that how can we establish the leadership communication? How can we be more people oriented rather than self oriented? How can we uh, put more attention towards listening to people rather than just saying because it's not leadership is not about us. It's not about I. It's not about me. Leadership and leadership communication. It's all about my people, my uh, students and their benefits. Yes, Anju ma'am, it's it's over to you now. Thank Hello. you very much, Mr. Shahnawaz Ayub. Shahnawaz, Shahnawaz Ayub, madam. Shahnawaz, sorry, sorry, Shahnawaz Ayub. Yeah. I'm two of them. I'm seeing. I'm a little confused. I'm getting two devices. It's a mobile issue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, for giving us a very beautiful and uh, knowledgeable information. Um, now I am highly thankful and grateful to our uh, eminent speaker, uh, Mr. Alok Joshi, sir, who has guided with us such a great uh, vigor, skill, zeal, and enthusiasm, and that too. In a very lucid and distinct manner, he has to light very skillful and nicely on the topic of uh, uh, leadership communication. I would uh, especially appreciate some of uh, uh, his way and method to uh, throw light on the topic such as goal effect of communication. How do uh, we communicate principle of pedagogy? Uh, what is the barrier between a student and teachers? Uh, and most important topic cover, uh, sir covered like uh, that is logos, ethos, pathos. Uh, uh, he has talking about uh, uh, our dressing sense, gesture, body language and voice for uh, our personality uh, credibilities. Uh, thank you so much sir. Personally, I love your session. Um, now, I, now I would like to invite Professor Mrunal Deshmukh to deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, one and all present here for today's faculty development program. So on the occasion of this FTP program, I take this opportunity to give my vote of thanks to all the dignitaries today on behalf of School of Science, GHRU, Saikera University. First of all, I would like to give my special thanks to our today's program chief guest speaker, Mr. Alok Soshi who has accepted our invitation and given us valuable and precious time. You have guided us in a very proper direction that what is exactly communication? Communication is just not, just not a sharing of ideas, but it is about voice modulation and expressions. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your productive information and we will definitely implement it. I would like to thank our chairman, Sunil Raisoni, sir, who has given us very wonderful opportunity to conduct this FTP program online as well as offline. I would like to thank our honorable vice chancellor, Meena Rajesh, ma'am. I would like to thank our registrar, sir, Sriram Zoshi, sir. Without his cooperation, this program couldn't have been a succeed. I would like to thank our Dean School of Science, Professor Vidya Meshra, ma'am, for her kind support and guidance to make this program a grand success. I would like to thank our Dean of Triple IC Sale, Professor Anju Naidu, ma'am, who has always remained a part of our institution's grand success. I would also like to thank our today's host, Professor Shalini Prajapati, ma'am. And last but not least, I would like to thank all the participants who have attended this session very patiently. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
thank you everyone for your presence without your presence it could not happen thank you so much should i leave now sir shana sir madam is from jhansi uttar pradesh Okay. Madam is joining from Nasi, Uttar Pradesh. Oh, nice. Nice to know that. <laughs> Very nice. She is senior professor. Uh, hello, I am audible. Okay, uh, today's session is uh, concluded. Thank you so much, everyone. You can leave the meeting.